Here's a little trick in life. If you ever want to find yourself a new project car, all you have to do is say the magic words. I'm not going to buy any more cars this month, and I think I'm going to save up some money. I swear, every time I say that, within a couple days, if not hours, something crazy pops up for a great deal on Marketplace. So that being said, I'm going to crack open the throttle, and we'll go see what we found. All right, before we get into this video, let's pump the brakes and back up a little bit for context. There I was laying in bed one morning when I woke up, instinctively rolled over and checked Facebook Marketplace and saw this. At this point, I've only been awake for 18 seconds, but I can already tell that I'm looking at our next project. And from the looks of it, it seems to have been someone else's last project. Based off this photo alone, I knew we had one hell of a package deal on our hands. In just the parts pile, I see a supercharger, a couple carburetors, maybe a whole second interior, tons of extra parts. There's a lot here. However, it was the next couple photos that sold me. Sure, this is an old Mustang too, usually an undesirable car, but someone had already done all the hard work for me. This sucker had a 302 and a T5, and honestly, it looked pretty solid. The ad stated that the car had been garaged for the last 20 years. I asked what happened, and she said 20 years ago her husband blew up the original motor. He then decided to V8 swap it, and of course life got in the way. He ran into some issues with the car and eventually got fed up with it. At this point, they were so sick of it, they just wanted it gone. He was going to crush it, but thankfully, she convinced him to put it on Marketplace and try to sell it. Knowing the value of the parts I could see in the photos, I decided to offer them four grand, and the next thing I knew, I had bought a Mustang too before I even put my socks on that morning. Wait, what? <laughs> anyway, yeah, 1978 Mustang two. All right, let's get this loaded up and get the hell out of here. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to play with the Mustang because I was trying to fix the Cadillac in time for the truck pulls. And as soon as that was done, we packed the truck and drove straight to Missouri for the Durango revival. From there, the car spent the rest of the summer in the yard until we finally had time to work on it. All right, so it's been five months. The Mustang has sat exactly where I put it after, I'm guessing, the last clip where I was hauling it north. And nothing's changed. We haven't taken anything out of the interior. I haven't looked through it. I've looked at it a little bit, especially mowing around it. But for the most part, it's exactly how it was. And with that being said, today is finally the day. We're going to dig into this and see what we can find out about it and if we can get her going. I have noticed that driving around this thing, there is a lot of duplicates, which is fitting since it's a Mustang 2. And in this Mustang 2, we have two wipers, two dash pads, two interiors, two sets of rear lights, uh, way too ugly of lug nuts on the wheels, and so on and so forth. So let's dig into this, see what else we find in there. All right, time for a treasure hunt. Carpet. Oh, oh. Hmm, I think that's what this is for. If I had to guess. Brand new carpet for the whole car. All right. Quarter a bottle of Sync Romax high temperature manual transmission fluid. A fuel pump relay kit. Ooh, a scoopy. Ooh, scoopy, scoopy. A box with timing cover set. I think we're gonna need this. When I bought this car in the first part of the video, I put a picture on Instagram. If you don't follow us already, you'll see all sorts of sneak peeks and stuff. Five months ahead sometimes. <laughs> Junkyard underscore digs on Instagram. But someone said, hey, I know that car. It's my buddy from work and he talks about it all the time, which was perfect because I knew nothing about it. I didn't know a thing about this car. In fact, the guy who bought it from left to not be there to see me pick it up because he was so sick of it. Talking to the guy on Instagram, uh, he said that the main problem was a bolt got stripped in the timing cover or the front of the block. So we're probably gonna have to deal with this. Whoa, hang on. Weber 40 DCOE carburetor gasket kit. This must have been for something else. Yeah, there's whatever 40 gaskets. Interesting. What kind of carbs we got? I see Holly's. Holly's galore. A Holly 9510? No. List number is 5003. 50003. Manufactured by Holly for Motocraft. So this is a factory Ford carburetor of some sort. I'll have to look that up. Some of these go for good money for people that want number matching stuff. There's another Holly. This one's an aftermarket Holly from the looks of it. 4779-2. Dual feed, manual choke, double pumper. Yeah, that's a double pumper. That might be a 750 actually. That's going on the shelf. Oh, there's something in here. 
Oh, dude, we got we got a second set of T tops. Oh, hell yes. Oh, those. Oh, the Weber forties. Okay, there are Weber forties in here, but why? We've got this uh, supercharger here. It's a B and M. The hell is this thing? B and M. It's like a fuel injection hat. No, hang up. No way. Dude, I have never even seen one of these. I didn't know this even existed. It's like, is it like a low profile thing? I don't like, know what I'm looking at. It's, they're dual 40 mil Webers and an adapter hat for a supercharger to bolt to a small block Ford. <laughs> oh my God. Holy shit. I didn't even know they made this. That's probably worth the same amount as the rest of the car. If not more. <laughs> yeah, check this out. Dual. 40 Webers. They look clean as hell. That's gotta go on something awesome. Can you imagine dual 40 mil Webers on a small block forward with a supercharger oh in a low clearance, low profile package, which is definitely what that is. I would say it's for like Corvettes, but it's a Ford set. Look at that bad boy. Sounds good. This will be on something someday. That's gonna be so freaking cool. This was so worth it. You car oh. Oh, died. <laughs> I died. I guess it didn't want me taking this though. All right, now we're getting into the weird boxes of stuff. Yeah, brand new seatbelts. Oh. Those look incredible. Let's see what's in this case. Oh, dude, that's a Singer box. That's like a sewing machine box. Oh, hey. There's a little kit. A little carb spacer. What's in there? Oh, dude, eight <laughs> tracks. John Denver, <gasps> an eight track player. Oh, looky there. I was just gonna say too bad we don't have anything to play this in. It's a Ford. <laughs> it's a Ford eight track player. I wonder if this will fit in this car. All right, seat number one. Huh, there's a torque converter in here. A torque converter? Yeah. Oh, this one's all moldy. Spilling stuff everywhere. Oh man. Oh dude, there's an axle. <laughs> oh, there is an axle in there? There's an axle in the passenger seat. <laughs> oh dude, I think I just found side pipes. Oh man. Brand new side pipes. Look at that. That is awesome. Tire steering pump, coils, scissor jacks, radiator hoses, starter, Ooh. exhaust flange, this another is exhaust strange. flange. I don't know what this is. All right, let's get this cleaned out and we'll be back to explore what all we found. Well, she's empty. A little bit of rust in the floor. Uh, it's got some, I don't know if I'd say Bondo. It looks more like plaster for a house. I don't know what that is. <laughs> we just won't worry about that. Yeah. How the hell did they fit all this stuff in there? <laughs> like there's this pile, which is, you know, a sizable pile. Up on the table too. And of course you've got the supercharger with the dual 40s and then you've got all of this as well this was all in the car yeah somehow it all fit in here and you'll notice we're sitting a lot higher but still not where i'd want it to be let's pop the hood and see what the hell we got going on under there oh jesus <laughs> da -da -da. yes he put a lot of work and money into this car. It looks like it. So I'm assuming that's like an 86, 84, 86 up, 302, probably a roller block. Extra capacity, millet and oil pan, aluminum champion radiator, um, electric fan, brand new water pump, all these nice billet alternator mounts and stuff. Red stock manifolds. Interesting. We do have a carb on here. List number 50265, also a Motorcraft carburetor, so probably like a 500, 600, somewhere around there. Be about perfect for this motor. Down here, there's our oil pan again, and that looks like a new rack and pinion right there. Is that? It's a flaming river rack and pinion. It's <laughs> new tie rods and everything all the way from the end. I think putting it on the trailer, I saw that it was a T5 and it's got new U-joints and everything. So as far as like the replacing stuff needs to go, this car's essentially rebuilt. We yeah. just gotta finish it. 
Oh. There's something in this one. Nice. <laughs> just, a, just a giant socket. <laughs> what is this? That's probably for the lug nuts. Oh it's my god, it is. Spikes on them. It definitely is. I was literally wondering how to take those off. <laughs> now I know. Yo. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, no. Too big. Thank god. Alright, so Isaac's been vacuuming out the car. Looks a lot better in here. Uh, in the meantime, I've been inspecting the front, trying to figure out what we're dealing with. I didn't find any threads that seem bad. Maybe this one over here's just got a bunch of rust in it. But nothing looks drilled, at least from what I can see. Everything is loose, though, for both the timing cover and the water pump. So we need to take all that off and reseal it. Although I did see they, they did do this part right. They put gasket sealer on both sides of the gasket, so that's awesome. But we're going to pull it all off and reseal it anyway. And there's red RTV on that screw stuck in that hole. Next to that we have no hose clamps on our fuel line and the world's largest fire starter, the glass filter. If you guys don't know, you should never run these. What happens is you're driving along, right? And this thing's bouncing somewhere in your engine bay and it goes, and it cracks. This one surprisingly did not crack, but those crack and then they have a high pressure fuel leak and everything burns to the ground. Also, I just noticed there's no fuel pump. This isn't plumbed to a fuel pump. It's plumbed straight straight to the car. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's cut the length. So maybe there is an electric fuel pump in that new tank. For now, Isaac's going to work on taking our water pump off. He's got this nifty uh, drawing that came with it. The guy traced it out and put all the bolt holes in it. But if you don't want to do the cardboard method and you like something a little more universal, you guys should check out these right here. This is called the Boltster. They have multiple variants of this. This was their original design. It is a heat resistant, chemical resistant, lifetime warranty silicone mat that you can take all your hardware out of wherever you're working on and shove in here. And because of its honeycomb design, just like that, you can draw out the pattern of whatever part you're taking off and figure out where all of your bolts from. If you guys want to check these out along with all the other awesome products Bolster has to offer, head to bolster.com slash JYD20 for 20% off your order. That is an exclusive code that you can only find right here on Junkyard Digs to get you 20% off these badass products. And speaking of off, looks like Isaac has removed our water pump. Oh, it's cool, oh, didn't cool. it? Yay. Nice. Alright, let's get that timing cover off. And it's off. All right, we got it off. Let's get this guy out of there. It was double RTV'd all the way through, so I'd love to see that. That is the hole they were talking about. And from the looks of it, we've got a helicoil that's been put in, but like ripped out. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. All right, well, I've got our helicoil out and I'll tell you what, it ain't looking good for the home team here. I don't know how well you guys will be able to see it, but that hole has two holes in it. The upper one, you can see a shelf right in the center. The upper one is drilled at least, it's closer to where it's supposed to be. It's closer to center. <laughs> and the oversized drill bit is incorrect and it is too low. So I'm going to get a 1764th drill bit, which is what you're supposed to use when tapping a 5 uh thread and try to drill deeper and maybe even a blind hole through. I know some people might think that's terrifying to drill a hole all the way through the engine block, but a lot of these came with holes all the way through. In fact, we always say put RTV on these bolts when you put them in so that they don't leak because a lot of engines have blind holes. So yeah, that's the plan. Drill that at the correct size, see if we can get an extra long bolt to catch, hopefully some concentric threads that we can put at the very back of that hole. But we can get this to tap for 5 sixteenths. There's a lot of play in this hole and in the casting, so we'll be okay. funny on our tap, the way it's hitting that casting in the back. Not loving it, tell you that much. Uh, 
Well, it's making threads. I chose a fine thread tap. It gives us more threads per inch. It should be stronger, in theory, because we're not going to have a lot of those threads to hold on to anything. This is the part where I break the tap off, and then we just throw the whole car away. <laughs> it's going to be at a hell of an angle. Ah. Like I said, we've got a good size, like, 7 sixteenths hole through the casting. Wow, that's crooked. How did it get so bad? It was like just a little off when I started. Our angle this way isn't great anymore. Our angle this way is terrible. Let's just see what happens. I'll keep it this for a while and we'll be back. All right, update time. Just confirmed this is gonna work. I happen to get it straight enough that I can still catch these threads and still make it all the way through all of this without getting too bound up. So that's gonna work out we're fixed. If you guys ever do have to do something like this and you don't get your angle right, kind of like I did, but it's even worse, what I was going to do was go to the store and find some 516-24 thread all thread and then screw it in like this, RTV it into the block, make sure it's not going to leak. Then I was going to smack it with a hammer and make it straight and make this a stud. But I got lucky enough that this bolt will work slash I couldn't find any fine thread all thread so I'd suggest using coarse thread but that was my plan if that ever helps anyone with this problem put your all thread in smack it straight boom now it's a stud either way without further ado it's time to get some RTV on some gaskets and put the front end of this motor back together as I mentioned earlier what we do with all of our gaskets is we double coat them in RTV we just put a light film on each side enough to cover up all the color that helps them hold in place and seal very well. I'm just gonna keep this up for a while and then I will position that on the back of this, get this timing cover centered, to make sure it's concentric around the harmonic. You wanna install your harmonic onto the shaft before you bolt anything down to make sure that's centered. Throw all your bolts in and then go ahead and put the water pump on, la -di -da, -di da and just assemble the front of this engine. get a flashlight. Now I'm going to inspect that our harmonic balancer seal has an equal amount of tension all the way around. That would tell me which direction I need to move our uh, timing cover. And right now the answer is down. So I've got a gap on the top and it's folding on the bottom. So the first bolts we're going to put in are the ones from below. So what happens on that seal, and if it's not centered, is you're going to have too much pressure on one side and you'll burn up that side of the seal. And you're just going to have oil all over your driveway after all this work. Don't go full tight until you get the other one yeah. in and then send them down equal a little bit at a time. You sure it's the rubber seal on the bottom of the time cover? Yeah, isn't it? Oh. That looks perfect now. Hell yes. And last but not least, this one. Alright, we'll get these torqued down the spec and we'll be back. So as I just pointed out, as after I put the RTV on the gasket. A new one. Uh, there's like six generations of front timing cover for a small block Ford, and I guess this one has provisions for a fuel pump, but no, uh, they didn't. They didn't uh, make it go through. So <laughs> we'll have to put electric fuel pump on this car, I suppose, because I'm not taking that back off. All right. Well, put that on the shelf. Good morning, everyone. This morning, Isaac is making us some plug wires. I am sourcing an alternator because this massive behemoth of an externally regulated 1G alternator doesn't even fit under the hood. If you don't know a ton about alternators, Ford has, I believe, six generations. We only usually deal with the first three here in the channel. Uh, the first generation is one of these right here. This is a 1G. This is a 1G large case, uh, high output. It makes like 100 amps. Either way, this is a 1G or an example of one. These are externally regulated. This is a 2G, it is internally regulated. And this is a 3G and is also internally regulated. Uh, things to note are these tab positions. Some of them are offset to where this tab is over here. And a lot of them are straight, just like this. These should bolt right in place of an old 1G if you'd like to upgrade your alternator. There is a 
ton, and I mean a ton of information on this. Motor Trend's got a lot of good write-ups about how to source them, uh, how to install them, how to different bits and pieces. There's your, your 3G's right there. The 3G's will usually come in a serpentine belt because they started in 93, I believe, 94. Yep, 94. But they usually come with a serpentine belt. Uh, you can get brands that come with pulley that for V-belts or just swap a V-belt pulley on. But just know for anyone looking to upgrade your alternator, these exist. You can do the research and figure everything out for yourself. Like I said, tons of tons of write-ups on 3G alternator swaps for trucks and cars. What we are going to do is ditch this giant thing in favor for a small case 1G which came on a 19, I think I got it set to 1977 F100, which is that truck right there. The next problem we face is finding a belt drive. I, as you can tell, do not have any pulleys for this car. I would have to steal them from somewhere. Or, I think there's a box over here that we found in the car. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so ugly. That's a water pump pulley. There's a crank and there's an alternator pulley and here's the belt. It's just so bad, we might have to do it. All right, the big uglies are on. Dude, this belt. <laughs> Hope that, that switches out fast. <laughs> it's been like that for 15 years. <laughs> the unsupercharged supercharged engine. <laughs> we've got our accessory drive on, we've got a battery in, we've got everything hooked up to where it should be able to crank over right now. So let's go test that and we'll check for spark. And maybe hit it with a little brake cleaner and see what happens. Are you ready? Ready? Oh! I guess it's in the air. Uh, <laughs> Is the coil not plugged in? I hear it sparking. Sounds like we'll have spark, so that's good. I said we just go ahead and hit it with some juice right now. Give it a go. Yeah. I think our timing's in the right direction. I didn't set it. I forgot to touch it until just now. So. See what happens. Ready? Yep. You got anything on your oil pressure gauge? Uh, I was not looking. I think our timing is incorrect. Let's see, rotation this way, let's advance it a bit. All right, go ahead. The oil light was off? Yeah, it was off. Sweet, let me give it a little more timing. Actually, you know what? This is what we're gonna do. Let's hook the boat tank up to it and actually plumb the fuel system. Alright, let's see how bad a fuel leak we're gonna have. And your question, does the float work? Yes. Wow. Impressive. Does the accelerator pump work? Yes. Okay. Thing must have been rebuilt and set aside well. Go ahead, sir. were about to fall off the back of the alternator. That's fine. <laughs> you don't need an alternator. They were like sitting there just like spinning out. Oh, <laughs> look at them. All right, let's get that alternator wired, do a few more things under here, and set this up to where it can run a little longer. Okay, I've got our alternator wired up, I think. This will tell us. I have no idea what our transfer slots are at. Since I didn't put this carb on, I can't set it myself. Either way, I've got our timing lights, so we should be able to dial that into a pretty close range. Lock that down and then do some more stuff on this motor. Oh! 
All right, let's keep buttoning stuff up. I think the next step's probably, uh, probably a radiator. All right, welcome to the underside of the Mustang. Isaac's putting our radiator in. I am dealing with the fuel pump thing. Not that bad under here. Back here, like the bumper, the bad, big bad. But up there, not terrible. And it's kind of one of those middle of the road things. Anyway, speaking of middle of the road, this travels down the middle of the road. It's an electric fuel pump that's here. It's just not wired in, so that makes my life easy. We've got a new sending unit, new lines, new fuel pump, run some wires, and we should be good to go. Well, that took a little convincing, but a little it's bit. there. Thankfully there was a uh, one and a quarter inch splice in that box over there that was in the car, so we put that guy here. We've got one more hose clamp on there, and that'll be good. Meanwhile, I've got all of our electrical done. We've got both relays over here. We've got our fan feed our fan ground, and then our trigger wires that run inside, as well as our power feed for the fuel pump. If I flip this, fuel pump, and this one, fan. We've put a real fuel filter on up here. I've uh, got our line lined up there. I was just putting the last hose clamp on. We're gonna fill this with coolant, and then run it for a little bit, I guess. I don't know, might as well. Yummy, yummy, forbidden Kool-Aid. Here's something dripping down. Ah, oh, now we got a leak. Oh, it's the pet pack. It's oh, you stopped it. All right, time for a gallon of water. Well, once you know it, we got ourselves a bit of a water leak. It does not appear to be coming from our good buddy, the 5 16th bolt at an angle. It appears to be coming from just above that bolt on the back of the water pump, which is like impossible to tighten. Well, besides the one water leak, it doesn't leak. So that's good. Besides the leak, it doesn't leak. Yeah, besides, besides the leak, there's no leaks. <laughs> You'll love to see that. That means we did it right, and then we'll just have to redo it tomorrow so it's extra right. Oh, you know what we don't have? No, we have. Gas. That'll probably help. Well, just gonna throw a couple gallons in there for now and flush it all out of the tank, get all the shit out of the bottom of it before it hits our filter and our carb. And then we'll throw the rest in and try to get it. Damn, that actually looks pretty good. It might just be fine. No point in wasting gas, that's just liquid gold. Let's hook her back up. All right, Mustang, time for you to run off your own fuel tank for the first time and uh, probably 17 years or something, we have no idea really. six grand yeah it went up pretty fast yeah sounded more like three also we may have something wrong with our throw out bearing because like i pushed the clutch in and put it in gear and it just immediately started spinning with the clutch in also our horn doesn't work oh no all right i think that's a good day's work let's uh let the shop air out for a bit and we'll come back tomorrow to redo our water pump because i can hear it pissing up there right now <laughs> yeah uh, we'll fix that Put some interior in this, fix some brakes, see what our drive line might have issues, check fluids and everything, and then uh, go for a cruise.
You look so little in there. Uh, yeah, with no seats. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, I started playing with our brake system and putting carpet in the car while Isaac worked on getting the water pump off. What'd you find, sir? Uh, it doesn't look right. It does not. It doesn't look like it's the right gasket. It comes up, and this pump casting does not. So we just, everything's sealed perfect. We just had a big gap right there where it wasn't even touching anything. Well, I guess we need to source the correct gasket for the water pump side. All right, we just got back from the parts store. They didn't have the exact gasket we needed. They had this one. Hmm, that doesn't make any sense. We're doing another puzzle? Yep, apparently. <laughs> There, that one. The tornado would be looking one like their OEM pump. But what we figured is we can take this and cut it down, and flip it around, and it fits that. Learning point of this video is uh, the gasket on the back side of this plate and the gasket on this side of the plate are different gaskets. Although they both fit the exact same bolt holes, they are indeed different gaskets because of, once again, right there, a little hole peeking through. And that was our leak. So make sure if you're ever replacing the gasket between the pump and the backing plate itself right here that you get the right gasket. Usually those come with the pump. Uh, in our case, if you remember, it was all covered in RTV and needed redone. So that's why we had it off. Let's get some RTV on both sides of these once again, put everything back together and this will be good to go. All right, center console is in. I've got four holes poked through the floor. Hopefully they're in the right spot. It should be. It's gonna take a minute, so I'm just gonna pretend that it's in. <laughs> All right, there we go. Looks beautiful. Thank you, thank you. It was a lot of work. <laughs> We've got everything RTV'd. Our pump's second sitting time. There. Yeah, second time. Our pump is on. It's just chilling right now with a little bit of force. We're gonna let the RTV cure a little bit, and then we'll torque them down. In the meantime, I've installed our passenger seat. I'm gonna tighten him down the rest of the way, grab the D-germ, wipe everything off, and our interior is pretty much good to go. Looks like a car now. Not bad. All right, there we are. She's all torqued down, good to go. Our interior is all reinstalled. We've got all the glass cleaned up. Isaac's gonna throw our uh, T-tops back on. Hopefully correctly, hopefully correctly. I've never, uh, never owned a T-top car before. Well, it doesn't appear to fly off. It stays. Yeah. The whole thing is made out of caulk. Yeah. So, just, it's just layers it. upon layers of it. Pick all back here. It's like an inch of it. <laughs> so, they definitely leak. <laughs> a touch. Our interior's all together. Got our steering wheel all cleaned up. That Ford Sport steering wheel. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Good enough. <laughs> I think once our RTV cures, we should fill the radiator. Take this thing out, turn around, bring it back in, and use our beautiful Ben Pack 10,000 pound lift. Because I don't really want to crawl under this anymore. The clutch doesn't work. Um, I got it on the floor, I stabbed it in gear, and it just started driving away. <laughs> I don't know if we need to tighten our cable or what, but this is going to get interesting. I didn't even realize this car had slotted bags. <laughs> For some reason, I could not take my focal point beyond here. Okay, so pulling this car outside and turning it around just now, I learned a couple things. One, obviously our clutch needs a lot more adjustment put into it. Anytime it's in gear, it's driving, so that's not exactly ideal. And thing number two is the fact that we have zero brakes despite the pedal feeling like it has a little bit of resistance in the back of its stroke. There's nothing there. Early on when I hopped in this car, I hit the pedal and it went pop and went to the floor. That was probably the piston being seized in the master cylinder and I busted it loose. And all the seals and stuff are going to be junk because of that. So we're going to have to replace that. And we'll start digging into wheel cylinders, brake calipers. We might have to turn some rotors even. Yeah, this might turn into a full brake job. Let's find out. Well, look how cute these little guys are. Like, <laughs> 
We got that slowing down a V8 five-speed car. If I keep this around, uh, note to self, those are going to need to upgrade. Them. More importantly, though, right now, they're going to need turn because they've got some deep rust in them. Holy shit. Ooh. She definitely had a bad wheel cylinder. Yeah. See how wet that is? All the wet and goopy goop. That's, even though it's been in there for 20 years, it's still really dark coloration, which means that there was moisture in there, which would be brake fluid. Our pads look okay. Everything needs cleaned really bad, but yeah. we got to take it all off anyway to do wheel cylinders, so. Well, no way to get it done besides just digging into it. Do you want to do drums or discs, sir? I'm more familiar with discs. Probably have to repack wheel bearings, too. So. Oh, great. I'm doing drums. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got half of our brakes done in the rear, and we broke a couple of self-adjusting cables. I just kind of looked at it, and it didn't <laughs> like it. Literally stared at it, and it popped right yeah. in his face. It was hilarious. <laughs> After that broke, I went and got my miscellaneous used brake parts to see if I had any other used hardware that fit, and I didn't. And I went, oh, you know what we do have? I another totally forgot. Axle. Exactly. A whole other axle. And that made me question things. <laughs> like, why was there another axle in this car? This axle might be a way better ratio or a posi or something. So we started looking it over, and sure as shit, this thing is a five lug and a posi traction unit. Probably a true track, if I had a guess. This is an 8-inch axle. We counted the ratio by turning this until that did one full revolution. And over there we got 2.5. 2.5, 2.6. Which sounds about perfect for what I would expect. I'd imagine it's a 2.5. This was around 3.5 to 3.75. So I'm yeah. thinking 373 posi, 2.5 open. I, I think I know what our next step needs to be. Yeah, it's a little extra work, but I mean... What I think we can do, I called up Quick Performance, asked them a few questions, and Ashton confirmed all 8-inch Fords are 28-spline axles. The only thing that differs is the axle length. We need to measure our axle from here to the other side to make sure they're the same length. But what I think we're going to do is take the four lug axles, put them in here so that we can keep our old rims and we don't have to source rims. Side note is the brake parts in here look to be in much better condition. Yeah, they're literally all new brakes over here. So we did all that for nothing. Yeah. I take it the impact. <laughs> I take it the impact wasn't touching it. No. <laughs> Man, you just got your junkyard digs hat dirty. Oh no. I guess you're gonna have to head to junkyarddigs.com and get a new one. Like Maybe check out some of the stickers and koozies available while you're there. Junkyarddigs.com. <laughs> I'll be here a while. Yeah. <laughs> Four more on that side and three more on this side. You're gonna be puking. I'm gonna be so dizzy. Fun fact, if you have a four nine inch and you want to do brakes really, really fast, you can buy this right here, fully assembled from Quick Performance. All the brakes and everything on the backing plate. Take the four nuts off like I just did, pull your axle out, slap this guy on, hook your lines up, done. Brake job in like 25 minutes. Check out those and a whole bunch of other goodies on quickperformance.com. Right here in Iowa, good friends of ours and an excellent company to get your parts from. Check out. stuck here. <laughs> All I can do is rotate. Well, all it cost me was a pair of pants. <laughs> Put it out. As you can see, either before these were parked or sometime while they were parked, these bearings got re-greased and we got new pads. I've taken the wire wheel, cleaned these up, soaked them in a little brake clean, got all the dust and crap off of them. I went to turn the rotors on our beautiful, amazing Benpack Ranger combination brake lathe, and the rotors are so small they don't fit over our spindle. So we have the other brake lathe. This feels wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac's got the super scraper, and he's just taking the rust off. This feels so wrong. I'm sure it's okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, see, that's what we started yeah. at. Yeah. Flip her again. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Those are... The pads can clean this up okay. There's a couple little scuffs, but... I yeah, mean, they're, they're more friction. Yeah. It's probably fine. Huh? Yeah, it's got another 100,000 on it. Yeah, there's still metal on it. It's yeah, okay. I mean... It's all even, just temporary. Even once you get through this, you still got the little fans. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is so thin. <laughs> I'm gonna check that side for a stuck caliper, but uh, these will be changed soon. <laughs> Let's just get this thing driving this week. There we go. After the super scraper, we took it over to the bench grinder and hit it with the wire wheel. Who needs a brake lathe? Under all this rust is just so many grooves. This one's gonna be an issue. It looks like a record. <laughs> I wish I had a record player we could put it on. Oh man. <laughs> what song do you think it would play? The Wiggles. The wig. <laughs> <laughs> it's slowly turning. It's slightly automated. <laughs> We're gonna have to get some new brakes for this car. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, there we go. This was a bit of a pain in the butt. My tripod's tied up right now, so we didn't film it. But our new eight-inch axle, new eight-inch axle, is installed. To accompany that, we've got a box over here. And here we have, from our buddy Doug, performance, new four lug axles. And I know a lot of people are probably saying, why would you put a bunch of money into four lug axles? And once again, we know how many five lug rims in this car has to be done today so the video could be out tomorrow. Someday, I'm sure if this stays around, we'll swap it to five lugs. But I traded them the old housing for this. Uh, they take the eight inch housings, cut the tubes off and make them into nines. Cause there's people that need those for something. I'm not sure what. Not my place to ask. All I know is that Quick Performance hooked us up with these. So, once again, if you need axle parts, quickperformance.com or shoot them a call. They've got a great sales floor out there that'll help you with anything you need. We'll put on these new axle seals and then slide these into place. I would say good luck in there, little buddy, like we usually do, but this is a Quick Performance axle and they're strong as shit. So, you'll be just fine. Don't break everyone else. There we go. All right, there we go. Our axles are in, our retaining plates are on, everything's good to go. It is time now for exhaust. I've got a box full of adapters, a tube, some mufflers. I have a whole bunch of math to do in my brain and some fitting to do. So I'm just gonna bolt all this together and I'll show you what she looks like when we're done. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not Isaac. <laughs> Wait a second. Everyone, this is John. Golden Roster Bust YouTube channel. Hey, that's hot. Hey, it's hot. If you happen to be in the area, thought he'd stop by, help out, help us finish this car up today. You uh, you have one of these, don't you? I do. I have a 76 Mustang with a 302 with a C4 automatic transmission, and it's been sitting on blocks since night or since 1917, 2017, and it it it's the death of me. I'm gonna one of these days. We're gonna fix it. Go like check out his channel. <laughs> check out his channel. <laughs> Golden Rust or Bust. He's got a whole bunch of small engine stuff, some cars, old Chevy trucks. I'm gonna be working on a uh, on a three wheeler. Three wheeler. Be, yeah, I'm gonna be putting out a three wheeler video here oh, soon. Hell yes! All right, let's get this freaking exhaust finished up, eh? Hey. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. We've got our uh, Flowmaster Delta flows that came on another Fox body I bought once upon a time. Uh, some more leftover pipe here. Some stuff we're gonna ignore up there. All that matters is what happens when I turn this key. Let's see how she sounds. One, bleed the brakes. 
two, adjust the clutch. Three, figure out what that weird noise was up front that I can now hear because it it's not open headers. I don't know if you heard it, but it was like, whizz. Yeah, that was, I'm sure that'll be fine. It's probably the clutch. One more for the ladies. One more for the ladies. Time it went tick, 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 tick. Yeah, she burns a little, uh, either burns a little rich or burns a little oil. I don't know. I don't know. I'm doing better than my Mustang. That's <laughs> true. That. That's true. <laughs> Beer and pizza? Beer and pizza. Beer, pizza, breaks. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, uh huh. Down. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. All right, see this is why I do the thing with the hose and the jar so I can see if there's bubbles and see if there's any other shit I want to flush out. This one had some pretty gnarly looking brake fluid in it, as you can tell. Go ahead and press the pedal, sir. Oh yeah, we got brakes. All right, brakes are done. Let's hook up the last couple hoses and stuff and take this thing for a rip. The tires are on. Got our vacuum lines and everything finished up up here. The last step is this clutch. What's happening is the pedal is hitting the carpet before it's able to fully disengage the clutch. So. All right, it's been a few hours. John's back. I've been on the phone with SST, Late Model Restoration, all my friends with Fox Bodies all over the internet. No one had a good answer for me. What I was able to do was take a pry bar and put it right here. Doing so, I was able to move this fork far enough forward to disengage the clutch perfectly. So. I knew it wasn't a uh, pivot stud length issue or a fork geometry or a clutch depth issue in here. It was not any issues within our bell housing. That is all correct. The problem is this cable right here, just, it just doesn't pull two and a half inches like the Fox bodies do because they have a quadrant on top of the pedal. And by quadrant, what I mean is this guy right here, that is a piece of geometry that's used to roll over and take more cable up than what would be in a linear situation where the pedal's just pulling backwards. This is what's going on inside the Mustang 2. Adjustable cable just connects to the top of the pedal normally. With that, you're gonna get less cable movement. This guy's got a couple awesome videos on his channel about this stuff. Um, this is actually a great tip. If your trans is not meeting up to the bell housing, don't use bolts, that's how you break stuff. Instead, that's just press the That's a good way to clutch. break the transmission ears or strip the bell housing threads. Here's an easy trick. Hook up the clutch linkage and have an assistant press the clutch pedal, which allows the clutch disc to float just enough to get the transmission fully seated. So that's an awesome trick, but what we need to see in this video is how much that moves. Here's an easy trick. Hook up the... It moves from the back third to the front third of that hole. And ours, John, if you could be so kind, go ahead. Ours moves from the middle to the front third, so we're missing this much movement. We have half the movement they do. But with enough tinkering with the uh, cable adjustment, and I think I removed the rubber stop off the back of the pedal so it would go up a little higher, we were able to get this to disengage. You still hear the clutch rubbing the slightest amount and let off, John. And there's still a bit of preload on the thrust bearing, but talking to Silver Sport, they said that's actually what you want in a Fox body, and this should be just fine. So I can't speak for long term sake to see how long this is going to last, but it would appear you can put a T5 in a Mustang 2 and use the stock Mustang 2 cable for a four cylinder or V8. With well, that being said, this son bitch is done. Let's get it down on the ground and go for a ride. Alright. She runs rough, but she runs enough for us to take it around the block. We're going to do another video on this car. I'm going to put an AFR gauge in it and a vacuum gauge and show you guys how to tune an unknown to you carburetor with an AFR gauge and vacuum gauge and what to look for. Keep an eye out for that video. It'll be separate. I don't have time for it today and this is a great candidate to do it on. For now, let's go for a ride. Oh, the clutch pedal's so high now. I gotta like... <laughs> <laughs> Those noises will go away Real in time. self-clearance, right? Oh, yeah. We got brakes. So 
also can't fit my my foot between the carpet and the pedals. <laughs> We're going. Oh. Oh. oh, you know what's dragging? The exhaust. The exhaust. <laughs> it's so low. It's like this far off the ground because the car sits super low in the back. This thing is a lot of work, but damn if it ain't tied up together right now. Quiet in a second, that's good. God <laughs> oh. oh, dang! Holy shit! <laughs> it runs good up top, tell you that! Oh man! A quick hiccup and then tires. We're not gonna have an exhaust left after this. Dude, I think this thing might be a rocket ship. It's got the sparks on the ass like it's a rocket ship. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a clown car because like the clutch pedal's so high my knee touches the steering wheel all the time. I've ever gone to 35 mile an hour. <laughs> this thing, it needs work yet. We need to undo all the things that were thrown together, like those, by both us and anyone prior, but this could be a hell of a car. <laughs> I hit my head on the roof, <laughs> like over here. <laughs> Dude, it doesn't even try to grip, it just blows the tires off. You can't speed if you can't go safety. So there it is. That is the story up to this point of our 1978 Mustang II. A car everyone thinks is ugly to include myself, but I've kind of always wanted to own one. And if you're gonna own one, it might as well have a 302 a T5, 373 Posi, and T-tops, because that's just badass. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode where we took this car from an absolute bucket of parts, reassembled it, and went and ripped it around. It only took us a week and a lot of work, but we have a Mustang too that'll move under its own power. We definitely need to go through and put new brake components in. It was all over the road when I hit the pedal. As you can hear, we have some serious clearance issues in the rear. With our exhaust, we need to either make the car taller or tuck the exhaust up tighter, or probably both. Uh, the suspension in the rear is completely clapped. Like, it, there's nothing back there. Our clutch still has some goofy stuff going on with clearancing. I hate the pedal placement inside. My knee is always to the steering wheel. The carburetor has a big delay when we stab the pedal and it idles really rich, so we need to go through and fix all that. But that is all stuff for another day. And if you guys want to see that video, make sure you subscribe here to the Junkyard Digs YouTube channel. Thank you to everyone who helped. Thank you to uh, Shane over at Silver Sport Transmission for all of his advice on the clutch issues we were having. Thank you to John for all his help. Thank you to Isaac for all his help. And of course, thank you to the guy that put 17 years of work into this before us. I'm glad this car didn't get crushed because honestly, there's a lot of fun left to be had. We'll see you guys right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. Peace. Oh, it's pissing cool. <laughs> it? Son of a bitch. Oh, I can see it. What is that coming out of? starting to understand why you don't like these cars. I don't like these cars. They are. They're evil. They're cursed. Oh my god, it's the goddamn water pump again. Yeah. Or wait, no, is it? It might be this hose. Ah, oh, it's just the hose. We're good. It probably didn't get tightened. It definitely got tightened, but for some reason it must have blowed up. It's up here. It's at my union. Yeah, see it? Hold on. Who'd have thunk you use a random bushing you found on the bench as a coupler wow. and it leaks? Bizarre. The coolant's supposed to stay in the car. Oh, now you tell me. I mean, it's a green Mustang, and it just pukes green coolant <laughs> everywhere. Are we surprised? No. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.